How far is that? That's going to the West Coast. One time, back, one more time, and back three times. That's a long distance. Uh, Felix is very dear to uh, everyone in the South Pacific. Uh, he grew up in the church. He became a disciple as a teen. His parents are faithful. He's a phenomenal brother. I personally love him dearly. Like dearly, dearly, dearly. We uh, keep in contact, and I, you know how much I care for you, my brother. Um, this brother was leading the church as a single, uh, uh, which is amazing. But then he met a beautiful young lady who uh, was all the way here. And she actually is, um, I'm, blank, I'm sorry, Ashley, not Hamater, but she was Hamater. This is Larry and Alice. Where's Alice? A Alice's daughter. So Ashley Hamater, we all know her, Ashley. Yay! So now uh, it's, it's Felix and Ashley Tokumepora, right? Is that like that? I'm sorry, Ashley. I'm sorry. Amen. I'm sorry. Uh, but Ashley uh, grew up in the Virginia Beach area. What school did you go to? What high school? Bayside. Bayside, yeah. And so, uh, you know, they, they fell in love, and then she's now living there in Papua New Guinea. They have how many kids now? Five kids. No, you don't. <laughs> No, Alice is going to have a heart attack. Okay, amen. Two. But you know, it's also, in, you know, it's also inspiring that uh, not only for Ashley, but uh, Ashley and also Chelsea uh, DeSisto was also converting the team ministry here. And they were, they were childhood friends. And so it's amazing how God worked this out. Little did they know they're hanging out in the team ministry here in Virginia Beach. And Ashley would go to Papua New Guinea, and it, who leaves there with her husband, uh, Felix and Chelsea leads the Sydney church with her husband, uh, William Thorne, which is awesome. You know, I think it's also important to recognize it's not just them that actually go to serve as missionaries, but even their parents who are here. Uh, like the DeSistos, Charles and Lisa DeSisto, and also you have the, the other siblings as well. But then you have uh, Larry and Alice as well. So, I mean, they, it's just a big sacrifice to the family. I know, I know Alice is really excited. She sends us pictures about Showing the pictures about the kids. She's excited to be kids all the time. But we look forward to hearing uh, right now. Felix, we love you dearly. We'll give him a warm welcome. And he's traveled 9,126 miles for this lesson. So don't complain how far you came tonight. But open your heart to the message and uh, let's welcome up our brother Felix. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Well, good evening, everyone. You guys excited to hear God's word? Yeah. Come on. I am really excited to be here. It's been two years, and as we are fully aware, uh, COVID kind of like disrupted all our plans. Uh, but uh, we are here. The, the fact that we are all alive here is uh, all unknown to God. And, uh, but, you know, I'm so grateful to be here to see my, my father and mother-in-law and, you know, my uh, brothers and sisters, you know, and on the other side of the marriage, and, you know, just to get to spend some time with them uh, was very special. Uh, but, you know, I was there, and my mind was on the, uh, uh, the World Summit Conference, because uh, that was our plan, and then uh, we were coming by here, as always, we want to come and spend time with our family, and then I got a message from Alex again, uh, can you come and preach? <laughs> and I said, yes, definitely, I, I, I'm, I'm always available whenever I get the chance to be here in Empton Roads. Uh, this is a very special place for me and my wife. Uh, as you know, my spiritual father is Mike Fontenot. And, uh, you know, we, we, we work together. We partner together in the spa region. He is now uh, officially retired, but not re retired in Christ, uh, but in the ministry, you know, uh, you know well, serving full time in Sydney. And, uh, but, you know, you know, Mike was, uh, Mike used to lead the church here in Hampton Roads many years ago, but uh, one day he was a guest speaker in Port Mosby. And uh, my parents were kind of visiting around that time, and uh, it was that Sunday that uh, they never turned their back, and here I am. And uh, so, you know, this place is a very special place. It is a special place for my wife, too, as well, because her spiritual father, who is uh, Eric, who was a son leader here, <laughs> who reached out to Alice, you know, and, uh, you know, and, uh, and uh, Alice, Ashley, and I've uh, seen the third generation coming to Christ. And, uh, you know, in the words of Peter in Acts chapter 2, you know, this is for you and your children and those who are far off. And to see that unfold is such a, such a blessing. But, you know, for me personally, I want to say thank you 
for uh, allowing me to come speak to you all. Alex is someone who is very dear to me. As always, we laugh for the most part. <laughs> we goof around in the spa, spa region, and uh, but you know, uh, when you step over the line, and you know when uh, you know you get into those small meetings, and uh, when Alex challenges you, or you know, in your you know with the, with our Bible talk leaders or you know church leaders, and he's a very he's a man of grace, but very firm in the truth. You know, someone who holds a high view of scriptures, and uh, he's someone that sometimes you feel wounded, but uh, it's very good for you. And so, you know, he's someone that I really look up to, and uh, he always calls others around high, and particularly for me. So thank you, brother, uh, for, you know, just being an awesome, amazing brother. So, um, but uh, I, I want to share some good news, and uh, I, I put some slides, that, that the slides, right? I want to share some good news, and uh, so for the past two years, we've been meeting in a park, and, uh, you know, because of COVID restrictions, and a lot of venues were closed, we were not able to meet as a church, uh, so we met in a, like a theater, and that happened for two years. And uh, you know that, that's and this is uh, you know just uh, some of the, photo of the photos of the disciples there. And uh, you know I, I I think you know it's it's been a really great time. We've seen uh, you know a lot of souls come to Christ during that time, and uh, you know we've seen men and women step up also uh, to want to fill in the gaps and serve faithfully in God's church. And uh, uh, but you know the, you know we've seen. Uh, great miracles, uh, but you know, even b- between that time, we are raising myself and my wife. We are raising the next generation of leaders. Uh, we have a lit group. It's uh, LIT leaders in training. That's been going really well. We have a, a full-time intern we we hired uh, last year in October, and he's been doing a fantastic job. And uh, a part-time uh, sister from the campus uh, who came out for also from the lit group. So we are really excited about what God is doing in the Fort Mosby Church. Uh, you know, we, we've also had, during COVID, we've also had some weddings, wow. you know, so that's really exciting. We haven't had a wedding for a while, but to see, uh, you know, even in, in the midst of all these uh, lockdowns, you know, to see uh, couples, you know, tie a knot. So that's uh, Holland and Copsy, and, uh, you know, that's just one of some of the photos there. Um, maybe next time, some of our teens ministry there, you know, a meeting together. And, uh, you know, I, so grateful that uh, my nephew became a disciple uh, last year, which I'm really excited, really happy, and uh, it's part of a, a, a team's ministry. Yeah, they're all meeting here after service. These are some of our campus ministry, uh, you know, some of the students there, and, uh, you know, they're all uh, raising funds because we're having a, um, a, a, a spa conference, South Pacific Australian Church Conference next year, and uh, just you know, taking a photo, a selfie there after service, and, you know, all, and uh, so there's some of the campus there. We've been, the church there, we've been, uh, we've have, we have, uh, we've changed our kind of a way of doing things uh, every month and so once in a month we meet together as a church uh, as in our respective bible talk groups and then and, and the next fortnight uh we are reaching out where we have a uh, public evangelism and god has blessed uh the church we you know most of our our converts also came from our public evangelism we we just select a place and go to a, a shopping mall or just go knock to uh door to door and uh, reach out and and uh, that, that's that's kind of like what we're doing now uh, as far as ministry is concerned back in Fort Mosby. Um, so we you know, great to see some of our relatives come to Christ. Uh, one of the sisters who studied the Bible and, you know, came to church and her sister came and studied the Bible too as well. And now uh, their brother and his partner are also currently studying the Bible. Please be praying for them, Charles and Alice. And, you know, just really exciting to see God working through families. This is just one of our recent... Uh, Know, baptisms there and after service and uh, some of our singles ministry amen uh the yo pros there just taking a photo after service there and thomas the guy on uh in the, in the purple uh a pink shirt uh he's uh, one of our interns back in port mosby so uh, i think uh i think that's it just some good news i'm sharing uh, around uh, in what's happening in port mosby as a region, uh, 10 years ago, we started with, uh, we had a, around, uh, right, right across the Spa region, Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, uh, Papua New Guinea, and, uh, uh, and New Caledonia. Recently, uh, this year, we uh, we've, uh, planted a Christ Church, Church of Christ. You know, uh, we had a couple move there recently, and, and at the end of the year, we have a Newcastle. That's one of the region's uh, cities in uh, Sydney, in Australia. And uh, we also have plans for the lay, uh, Lay is like the second largest city in uh, Papua New Guinea. And so we have plans to, you know, plant uh, churches in those respective regions. And, uh, you know, 
God has blessed the region for the last 10 years. We've grown from 700, uh, 700 plus disciples to 1,400 uh, disciples. So we've had, I think earlier on, 10 years ago, I think we may have had, uh, Alex, when you were there, how many staff were there? I think we were like 30 or less than that. And uh, now we have uh, 50 uh, full-time staff around the spa region. I think we had 20 or something like that. And then we have like 50 now and uh, we're still hiring. But God has really blessed the spa region. I'm so grateful to be a part of a, a striving, growing uh, a region there. And uh, I'm able to share some of these things uh, to everyone here. But let's go straight into God's word. Amen. So, uh, you know, I, we are just, everything is very fresh on my mind from the ILC. Uh, I had the opportunity to speak at the conference and to spend some time with disciples. And I think some of us were there. And uh, it was a great time. It was my first time to see all the disciples around the world in Orlando. And I got to tell you, I was so overwhelmed. And I, I felt like, you know, I just came back from a transfiguration. And uh, kind of like, you know, yesterday and uh, the day before yesterday, just tossing my, uh, which, which sermon am I, am I going to preach? And this one, that one. I said, you know what? I'm going to, I scrubbed everything away. So I'm going to do a new one just for you. <laughs> and so I thought, let, let me just preach on uh, Colossians chapter 3. And uh, I just uh, wish I had more time to, uh, you know, look at it. But, you know, I've been studying the book of Colossians for a while. And I thought, you know, this is a, a good passage to really draw us back to Christ. And, uh, you know, we're going to look at that today and uh, just look at uh, Paul's writing. Uh, you know, Paul is, this is one of the epistle letters, you know, uh, prison letters, rather. And uh, Paul is in prison and uh, he's writing. There is a bit of a confusion and some, some uh, difficulties around the church. And, uh, and, and, and Paul writes this letter. Obviously, uh, if you've studied this book, uh, you will know that he didn't plant the church. Uh, but someone planted the church, but he had some news about what was happening there. He writes a letter, sends it to a minister, and he goes and he reads the letter there. And so we're going to look at some, uh, some of the things that Paul has addressed to the church there. And uh, hopefully we can uh, have some time of reflection and uh, also see, you know, uh, what are some of the messages that are uh, for us too as well in this day. Amen? Amen. So Colossians chapter 3. Uh, Living as those made alive in Christ, from one all the way to 14. And this will be our main uh, reading. Since then, verse 1, you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above and not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of, all, because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other. Since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which has been renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian or Scythian, uh, Scythian, a slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, Kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if, you, if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. You know, I have three points uh, to share with us, very quick uh, points. Look above, look within, and look different. Okay? So point number one is look above, and that's taken from verse 1 to 4. You know, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on things above. You know, Paul's, Paul tells the church, set your, hearts, set, set, your, uh, set your hearts on things above, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. This is such an important message for the church. Because when we set our hearts on things on earth, everything that we see, touch, and feel will all be destroyed. Paul reminds the church, do not get carried away with the world. Do not put your hopes in the world. You've got to put your heart, put your, put your mind on things above, on Christ. 
you know, the book, of, the book of Colossians was a letter written and sent to the church because of some, some of the some confusion that was happening. Some of the Jewish there were telling the people to go back to the Old Testament uh, uh, teachings. You, know, you need to be circumcised. Uh, you know, they were telling like, oh, you know what? You don't, you don't have to follow. Jesus is not really that. He's not really God. You got to keep, you got to do some things in order to win his favor. Uh, you know, they were telling you know, there was a bit of a confusion about uh, all these things about the person and the work of Christ. And Paul had, if you read chapter one, Paul uh, writes a lengthy, you know, detailed grand definition of the supremacy of Christ. He says, man, don't listen to all this garbage that's happening. Because even Paul himself, according to Acts, in the book of Acts, you will see that, you know, who is this Jesus? And he goes around and he persecutes anyone and everyone. He even got letters approved from the in a synagogue and uh, from the religious leaders to go and persecute or even, uh, you, know, um, you know, just bring harm to, to the disciples because of his view about Christ. But when he came to the knowledge of truth in the, on the road to Damascus, he had a totally different view about Christ. And now he writes this letter and he tells them, no, 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 look to Christ. Whatever happens, look to Christ. You know, this is so important for the church. Uh, I think, you know, you know th there, was a, there was such a strong emphasis about Christ Jesus in chapter 1, and I think this is really important even for us today. You know, Christ, you know, I think by now we are, we are all fully aware that the gospel is non-negotiable. When we come to church, we don't come with our terms. We come on the Christ terms. You know, when we come, when we come to gatherings like this, we don't come with our customs or our traditions and our ways and our views and this is what we want to do. No, we come under his rulership. We come under his authority. We come under his reign that Christ is supreme over his church. And Paul, you know, he says, you know, he reminds us, don't, don't look to the things of this. You've got to look above. Set your hearts and your minds on things above. Paul's explanation of Christ earlier, you know, is... Of, of him, you know, of, of Christ is the, as, as the authority and the only source of truth is key to understanding godly wisdom and worldly deceptions. You know, church, our greatest warning in the Christian faith is when we start to pursue the outside truth, which is no truth at all. <laughs> uh, when we start to look at the world and its philosophies and, and ideologies, you know, you have to know that this is a start of a downward spiral of our Christian faith. And eventually we will leave God and leave his church. And it's just a matter of time. This is why the church is so important for us to continue to cling to Christ. Uh, you know, a few weeks ago I preached to the church and I said, man, if you, you know, you, you know th th this church here, I am never in authority. <laughs> you know, when you come to the church, you know, I am the, I'm a church minister there, but me and my wife are never in authority. Not even the leaders are in authority. When we come to church... Christ is the authority. He is the head of the church. And, you know, I, you know, I, I think for me personally as a kingdom kid, uh, you know, I grew up in the church. And, uh, you know, you, you're looking at someone who has seen the church from an outside point of view growing <laughs> and, and becoming a disciple and journeying along with the church, you know. So in other words, you know, I saw the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I saw myself too as well. Uh, and, and believe me, beloved, you know, I have not arrived yet. And uh, we live, you know, I'm messed up and we're all messed up and we all, we all fall short of, of, the, of the glory of God. But I can tell you one thing for sure, 100%. There are some things that I don't really know, but there is one thing that I do know. And that is when the church starts to uh, disengage or starts losing their sight on Christ, I see people drift, drift away. I've seen it in the kingdom. I've seen men in the leadership leave the church and go out and go wild. <laughs> you know, people that you never thought. Even last year and two years, you know, I got to be honest that, you know, we shrunk as a church. Uh, we grew, the last time when I came, you know, we grew as a church for two years. Uh, we had a high percentage. We had the highest percentage of growth in the spa region. But, you know, two years, two years later, we've, we've, we've seen a lot of people leave as well. And it was really a tough time for us. You know, in, when, when you lose your job here, you get some kind of a support with the government. In Papua New Guinea, once you lose your job, you lose three other families tied to the family. That's a big deal. There is no support. Uh, and that, 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 that hit us really, uh, really hard in, in, in PNG. 
uh, but it was a very difficult time. But, you know, I, I reminded the church, if you hold on to Christ, man, you, you will not lose your faith. And, uh, you know, I've seen these things. You know, I've seen men leave God because of their shallow walk with Christ. And this is so important for us. Paul reminds us, Paul reminded the church in Colossae, and he reminds us even now after two year, after 2,000 years, we need to set our hearts and mind on things above. Because when we set things on earthly, uh, we will lose. We will lose the battle. You know, Paul, that's why Paul says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above and not on earthly things. You know, there is an interesting word that's used here. Uh, in the NIV, it says, uh, set, set your hearts on things above. But um, I don't know if there's a slide there. Um, in the ASV, in the King James Version, and the ESV, it says, seek the things that are above. Uh, you know, set, set your heart, set your mind, and seek. Set and seek are two kind of, it's a, like, a little bit different. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, seek is an interesting word. Uh, it actually means having an agency and a desire and an ambition. You know, when Paul is writing to the church, you know, do not just set your hearts on things above. He says, you know, desire it. You know, have some ambition for, for what is yet to come. That's your hope. You know, he, say, he says, you know, be, uh, you got to be urgent. You got to have a, de a desire and an ambition. We, we all are ambitious to something. But Paul writes to the church, man, you got to be ambitious for the hope and for the glory that is yet to be uh, revealed. You know, um, I, I want to show a, a, a slide of my, my father here. Uh, my, daddy, my dad is a long distance runner. Uh, he was a two-time Olympian. And uh, it's been more than 30 years and no one has broken his record yet in the 10,000 meters and in the marathon. <clears throat> he dominated his field in the 1970s and 80s. He was very ambitious. Uh, you know, he was a great seeker in running. And he had only one desire, and that was to win the gold. Uh, my dad in the 70s and 80s, he was known as the king of the road. Uh, no other marathon runner had that name until today. And, you know, this, uh, he, he celebrated his, uh, his 66th birthday. He says that he was born in 1954. He feels like he's, he's 68 years old. But we said, no, it's all right, Dad. You're 66, okay? You just completed the Old, uh, old Testament and New Testament, so... Uh, but, uh, you know, we, 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 we put, put all, these, all these photos we gathered were from the archives. He had absolutely no idea, uh, you know, uh, where, where those photos came from. And we had a uh, celebration. But, you know, he was, he was a seeker too as well. But one day, as I shared earlier on, one day he was seeking the Lord. And, and he came and he, he was jumping from, my dad kind of was a religious person. We, we hope from church to church. Uh, you know, my, my childhood, I grew up in the, Pentecostal, United, Catholic Church, you know, my dad was seeking and came to a point where he was already considering to take his own life. And one day, uh, someone invited him and uh, he said, hey, we have a guest speaker coming to town, and that's where Mike Fontenot comes in. And at that time, when he heard the word, the gospel preached, that shattered all his dreams. And, uh, you know, he, he, you know he, he had a dream of conquering the world and in, in, in Marathon, and, but now he decided to follow Christ. He wasn't pursuing the, the gold medals of the world, but he was pursuing a different goal now. You know, Paul is telling us to seek the things above. You know, th this is so important for us because he's not, he's not telling us to seek, to seek the leaders. He's not telling us to seek me or my wife or, or Alex and Gio or Ed Enten or the right kind of a leadership or the right kind of a church. No, Paul is telling us to seek the things above. When we put our hopes on things on earth and even on men and on leaders, you will come to a disappointment. And Paul is reminding us, man, you have to seek the things above. Paul is telling us this is so important for us. You know, Katie Westenberg, you know, recently I pu pu published an article on why our attention needs stewardship. And, uh, you know, she says, uh, when we consider stewardship as followers of Christ, we think of stewarding our resources like time, talents, and money, but we don't tend to think of our attention as a resource. Our attention is indeed a resource, an increasingly limited one, with hardly enough to go around. Stewardship is, in, in this area, is vital. And, you know, this, this article here, I found it really interesting because, you know, where, this reminds me of the words of Jesus, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. 
And, uh, you know, this is a great time to even sit down and reflect on our lives and, man, where is my attention? <laughs> you know, what am I seeking? You know, what am I really, tr truly pursuing? And this is such an important reminder for us. You know, uh, you know the, the, the attention requires us to be focused. You know, when we are not focused, there is no clarity and direction for our lives. And eventually there is no direction even for the church. It is this reason why Paul added that, 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 that we echo, this, echo these words even today. We must always look above. You know, John chapter 8, verse 23. All of you are from beneath. I am from above, Jesus says. All of you are from this world. I am not of this world. Christ, you know, reminds us to seek him above. You see, church, that's Christ's message to us. We need to constantly remind ourselves that everything we see is temporary. We ought to be men and women and children and those even studying the Bible, we must always seek above. Amen, church? Point number two, look within. You know, I think it's very important to constantly review our lives. <laughs> I need to constantly remind myself uh, who I am and review my motives and my intentions and uh, on a regular basis, but even better, every day. Even the decisions that I make each day, I need to take into consideration whether it's honoring God or dishonoring God. This is a great reminder for self, and I need to have a closer heart check all the time. You know, I you know, you know uh, uh, me and my wife were driving to Richmond to uh, spend some time with Tony and Tasha, and you know, uh, we were praying in the car, and I was praying like, God, have I been considerate of my wife? You know, and, uh, and, 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 you know, I, have, I, have I been loving her? Have, have, I, have I been saving my children? Have I been disciplining them the way you want me to discipline? You know, I need to constantly review my heart and check my heart where I am. Because Paul says here, it doesn't tell the church to just look above, but it reminds them, put to death. Therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, put to death. Because you can't have it in God's kingdom. We cannot allow that to, you know, to happen in our church. We cannot bring that baggage. We cannot bring that kind of behavior. We cannot bring that kind of attitude into the fellowship. We need to put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to the earthly nature. Nature. He goes on with all these specific things, and, and, he, and, he, and he says in verse 7, You used to walk in these ways uh, in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourself of all such things. And he goes on with another list again. And he, and, he, and he adds on to all these things. And he says, uh, you know, he reminds the church, you know, here there is no Gentile, no Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all, but put to death all these things. You know, <coughs> you know the sad thing, you know, sometimes, you know, these last two years, something I've never experienced. And I want to be open with you. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, these are some things that I've never experienced as a church minister. And um, these last two years, people left without any conversations. I've never experienced that before. In my whole life, <laughs> usually there's always some kind of conversations. Like, you know, hey, brother, how's it going? And there's some, there's some conversation happening, or what's going on. But, you know, people, like, you know, some, people were just left. Uh, and it's like, oh, what happened? You know, I'm, I'm sitting down with my wife. We're praying. And I, is God exposing something? Or did we do anything? Or do you have any sin? Or have I, do I have any sin? Or... Uh, is there a sin of Achan, you know, in the leadership or what's going on? Like, you know, a lot of questions. But uh, I found out later on in months, you know, there are some things, some scenes kind of like popped up. And uh, eventually we found out, oh, so this was going on. This was happening. And, uh, you know, during COVID, you know, there was a lot of secret scenes. And I got I, I to gotta admit, you know, it, it, it was such a stressful time even for myself too as well. Uh, but, you know, Paul here uses a very strong, strong word, and he says, put to death. You know, don't, <laughs> sin is not something to play around. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not something to just, you know, it's all right, it's okay. And, 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 and the church, you know, we, we can't allow that. You know, and, you know, these things kind of like, you know, uh, you know, we've seen that happen in the church. But I'm sure, you know, when these things happen, you know, it hurts our fellowship. It hurts the people that we love very dearly in our lives. But ultimately, you know, it hurts God because he is the head of the church. 
And, uh, you know, here Paul says, you know, it put to death. In its translation, it means uh, to make dead. Uh, in its strong, uh, you know, verb translation, it says to make dead. It suggests that we are not simply to suppress or control evil acts and attitudes, not to just suppress them. But it says that, that, that but we are to wipe them out. <laughs> completely wipe them out. You know, completely exterminate the old way of life. Why? Because of our new identity in Christ, you cannot tolerate sin. You got to put to death. You got to completely wipe out. And I got to be careful sometimes. Uh, you know, I have a rule, you know, sharing this to the church and, and to some of our leaders, you know, I have a rule. You know, I don't text women after 9 p.m. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't, I don't text anyone. You know, I have sisters and I, my, my mother and my aunties, my cousin sisters, yes, but any woman I don't text. That's a rule of thumb. That's a, that, that's a rule for me. I got to guard I gotta guard my marriage. I gotta protect my marriage. Uh, you know, I, I you know I don't I don't watch movies alone. I watch it with my wife. You know, once in a while we go to the theater or I'm at the house when we feel like when I'm watching Netflix. You know, that's just I gotta guard my heart. Sin is everywhere, <laughs> and uh, you know the heart is so deceitful. But I gotta I, I gotta be cautious. You know, this is a very important reason why uh, why Paul is very specific in the sin listing here, according to the book of Colossians. This is a teaching lesson for us to be specific in our confessions so that, so that you can get the help and the encouragement or even the rebuke. Although sometimes I don't want to listen to Alex, but I need to hear from him. I need to be completely restored to Christ and I got to be humble and to be open, to be real. Paul said that you used to walk in these ways, ways and which, which, which reminds me and all of us uh, that every Christian is faced with a question who will I identify with, the world or with Christ? We must constantly look within our lives and, and closely examine the areas that need to be completely put to death. The journey is not over yet, church. We must read ourselves from all such sins. Amen? Amen. You know, in verse 11, is such an important... You know, I, I, I kind of like, I was very suspicious with this verse because sometimes you overlook verses and I thought, let me just go in detailed study about this verse. And here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. And is, as in, and is in all. You know, Paul was addressing those who, are relig who had religious backgrounds and those who were also not, who didn't have any religious backgrounds. They completely knew nothing, anything before coming to Christ. There were some people who knew the Jew Judaism and, and the Hebrew and the Old Testament, and, and there were some people who didn't even know, and those were listed here in this verse here, the barbarians, Scythians. You know, how do, how do we know this? You know, the barbarians were those who were not Greeks, those whom we would call heathen today. The Scythian, the, 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 the Scythian tribe was the worst kind of barbarian. Scythia was, the north of, they, they, they was the north of the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. The people who lived there were probably the most barbaric the world has known. You talk about pagan and heathen and brutal, they're mean. They would take their enemies and scalp them. Then they would use the skull as a cup and drink the blood of the victims out of the skull. It is interesting to know that some disciples in the church in Colossae were cannibals. I come from a very small island in Milimbe. My island where I come from can fit in Virginia 250 times. Our history, we are all cannibals. <laughs> so take care of yourselves. <laughs> Five years ago, I married my wife, Ashley, and we went to a, uh, a honeymoon in, 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 in one of the islands in where I come from. And uh, just some, you know, a few minutes away, there was a cave where, uh, you know, there's a history about that. It's called the Skull Cave. They, uh, you know, um, people from my, my area in Milimbe, they would kill people. And the number of skulls would show some kind of a, like a pride. It was like a pride for, like a competition, uh, you know. And this skull, uh, this cave had a, a, you know, stack with skulls. Uh, but we were not able to that. We, we, you know, we chose to just go snorkeling, and that, that, that's fine, you know. <laughs> But amazing to know that, you know, if you didn't hear this, they were cannibals. They had their, their ancestors, and, you know, the gospel advanced, they had advanced to some of the 
the remote regions in around these regions in the Black Sea, and 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 and, and there were there were people who, who were cannibals who were also who, who also accepted Christ and came to Christ, and they were in Colossae. And and and, and Paul writes to the church and he says, you know, uh, you, you know whether you're Gentile or Jew or circumcised, uncircumcised, or if you're a barbarian. A slave or free, but, you know, when we come together, Christ is Lord of our lives. And, uh, you know, we've we, we got to carefully look within our lives and examine our lives and don't bring those things into God's church. We are all under Christ. You know, I have a slide to show. Um, uh, I want to share a little bit about uh, PNG. We have a, there is a practice uh, uh, called a one-talk system. Uh, if you understand the word uh, one-talk system, it will help you understand how my people in PNG work and how they function and the way the way things happen in PNG as they are. Uh, you know, the word one talk can be understood as one, as in one, W-A-N as in one, and talk can be talk, one language, and uh, as in talk. And, it, and, and, and so, you know, one talk means one, one language. Uh, you have to understand that I come from a country that has the highest number of native languages in the world. We are only just like 12 million people. India, I India is like <laughs> billion, or you know, I don't know, you know. The, but but we, our, our, we have the highest number of native la native languages, and India is second to us. That means to say that there are more than there are thousands of tribal ethnic groups in our country. Very small country can fit in Virginia 250 times but has thousands of tribes. And in my country, in, in my small island, a very small island, we have four different languages, and they speak it in four, four other different dialects <laughs> as well. So sometimes I have to really listen carefully to really understand what they're speaking, our language, but they speak it differently again. Um, and, and so, you know, you know in, in, in the church, in, in, in the church in Port Mosby, we are, we are all Papua New Guineans, but you have to understand that there are different people from different ethnic groups, different tribes, different viewpoints on culture, politics, marriage, family, the way they cook their food, the way they dress up, the way they uh, celebrate independence, all are very, you are looking at a thousand different ways. You know, in America, it's such a beautiful thing because you just put the American flag. <laughs> but in PNG, we don't, there is a PNG flag, but there is more of a tribal. We, we, we promote our provincial flags more than our, our national flag. Two years ago, our, uh, the government banned all provincial celebrations because it was so, we got so consumed with our provincial uh, celebrations that it kind of like caused division in our country. You know, the church that I am currently serving, me and my wife, you know, is composed of mainly P PNG disciples, but you have to understand that not everyone thinks the same. People come in with their own philosophies and ideas and cultures. and uh, We're going to kill a pig and we're going to celebrate. <laughs> uh, but then, they, then you have a, like, you know, 50 other people and this is how you should cook it. <laughs> you know, it's just like, man, it's just different. Uh, you know, marriage is different too. Everyone is here. You know, in my culture, uh, women buy men. You know, other cultures, you know, men buy women. You know, they, they pay the bride price, you know, and... Anyway, I didn't, my wife didn't pay me yet, so it's <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, Paul was writing to this church, and, you know, they were coming with different... And I, I... What am I trying to say here? You know, we were all like that, too. We had our own opinions, our own views, our own thoughts, our own philosophies, our own ideologies, but when we came to Christ, all of that was down the drain. When we came to Christ, you know what? Christ is the Lord of this church. When we come here, we submit under his lordship. Uh, we don't bring our customs. We don't bring our languages. And uh, like PNG, you know, we, we, this is how we do it. This is how we should, uh, it should be done. And this is what you should do. And, you know, this is how it, you know, this is how, what, how my people did it. No, 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 no. When we come to Christ, Christ is the Lord of this church. And we're going to constantly review ourselves within. And Paul says, you know, in here, you know, Paul says, uh, you know, here there is no Gentile. Here, in this house, in this church, here, don't bring all these things to the fellowship. Only Christ is all and through all. 
you know, and uh, we need to constantly with, look within our lives and see to it that, that we are all in for Christ. Amen? Amen. We're not half-hearted. Our identity is in Christ, and therefore we don't think like the world, behave like the world, or pursue like the world, or even smell like the world. But we walk as those in Christ. Amen, church? Last one. Last point, okay? Another 40 minutes. No, I'm kidding. It's going to be very short. We're going to look different. You know, we're going to look different, you know. And uh, I shared this at the ILC, and, you know, we were coming back, and, you know, my wife, you know, uh, we're stopping by in Australia, and, and you know, you're coming from PNG and going to Australia and looking at different clothes. And let's go look for some, uh, uh, some baby food. And then, you know, all of a sudden she, you know, diverts the, you know, route and goes to the clothes section and looking at all these clothes and all of that and, you know, new, new clothing and new attire. But anyway, we're excited to be here. We have all the blessed clo- uh, fashion and clothes that my wife can find here. Amen. Uh, but, um, but, you know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna look different. We need to look different as a church. You know, Paul says here, therefore, as God's chosen people, He's about to say something very, uh, very heavy here. As God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, I can almost feel like God is a racist. He's very selective. He's, it's like, yeah, God loves everyone, but his church is a very special place. He, yes, he loves everyone, but the church is very unique. He doesn't call anyone just holy, only the church. Only those in Christ. Not everyone is holy. Not everyone you see is dearly loved. We love our friends. We love our families. But in the eyes of God, there, is some, there are few people who are very dearly loved, and that is his church. And Paul writes here, he says, as God shows, hey, you know, Hampton Roads or, you know, South Beach or whatever you want to call this region, you know, hey, church, as, as God's chosen people, dearly loved, Holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness and humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if, you, if, if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these wretches, put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. As God's chosen people, you ought to live like that. You ought to be different. When the world doesn't want to forgive, you must forgive. As I was preparing my sermon, you know, uh, you know, someone from PNG messaged me and said, "Oh man, I can't forgive my girlfriend." <laughs> it's like, you know, she's not a disciple, by the way. But it's, oh, what do you think I'm going to say? You know, do you think I'm going to say you don't forgive them? You know, I said, "Listen, listen." I said, "What, what happened?" You know, I ask a, a few more questions, and I, okay, maybe it's about time you forgive and put to closure. And he said, "Forgive? I can't forgive, Felix. Tell me something else." That's how the world thinks. That's how the world thinks. Not in the church. In the church, you know, we ought to forgive. We ought to be compassionate. We, we ought to be kind. Got to be humble. You know, there is no room for unforgiveness. There is always space for forgiveness in our hearts. You know, Paul here says we, we ought to be different. You got you to look different. You got to look above, yes, look within, but you got to look different. Therefore, as God's chosen people, or as the translation reads, other translations read, the elect of God. The new man is elect, elect of God. This means that God has chosen the Christian and chosen him to be some, something special in his plan. We are all special in God's plan. And we are, we are holy and dearly loved. You know, I, I really hear, say, hear anyone say, like, you know, usually when you do welcomes, you know, say, hey, let's welcome our brother from Papua New Guinea or our awesome brother, or, you know, is the most giving. But you really hear someone say, hey, let's welcome our holy brother. <laughs> or, hey, hey, let's welcome our, our holy sister. You, you don't hear, you know, holy is such a big word to use. But here God says, you are holy and dearly loved. We are holy and dearly loved. Do, 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 you, do you realize how precious we, we are in God's eyes? You know, I don't know how you're feeling or what, what you've been going through in your life. I haven't stayed here longer to really spend some time with you, but man, man, if you have not heard this, you are holy and dearly loved. And from God, this is from the mouth of God to you. You know, to be honest, you know, uh, you know, this when I when I when I read this, you know, I get very emotional because sometimes, you know, I was, you know, earlier this year I was thinking I'm going to the ILC, but I, 
I was battling with, you know, just uh, a bit suspicious about my faith. Uh, I was questioning a lot of things about my life, and, uh, you know, I kind of like opened up to a few brothers, and uh, I think I mentioned a little bit to my, uh, to my wife, Ashley, and, uh, you know, we talked a lot about, and then I got an email saying that, hey, we're inviting you to speak, and I'm like, okay, God, what a, I'm uh, speaking, <laughs> we're inviting you to speak, not, not, not just speak here, but to speak at the ILC conference, and I thought to myself, oh, my Lord, what, what, what is happening? Uh, you know, is, is this like, you know, is this a joke or, uh, or something, you know, and it was such an incredible honor for me, uh, you know, to speak at the ILC and to be at the feet of all the heroes in the faith of our movement. And uh, God, uh, God blessed me with that. And I was so humble and, and was able to speak there. And, uh, but, you know, I, I just think, man, God, God loves us deeply, uh, more affectionately than anyone else. You know, church, you know, it says, bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has grievance against someone. Each one of the qualities mentioned in this passage can only be expressed in relationships. Therefore, our relationship with, with one another will display, will give the glory to God. Amen, church? You know, um, I wanted to show uh, one more slide before I close up. And uh, I come from a very beautiful country. But tribal conflicts is still an issue. While we were at the ILC, there were killings in the, in the main city, where we, me and Ashley, where we live. There was a, some tribal ethnic groups. Uh, they just kind of like bumped into each other in the traffic lights, and they started to cut each other. And somebody recorded, recorded that on, um, uh, on the you know, phone, and then it went viral on Facebook. And we were reading all of these while we were attending the ILC the summit, global summit. And, uh, you know, that kind of brought a lot of insecurity because this was happening all, uh, you know, there was a bit of a chaos and unrest in the city. And we're thinking about our families and my parents and my sisters. Hey, everyone, you know, what's, what's going on? And, uh, you know, uh, in, in PNG, you, we don't just say sorry. You have to say sorry and something else. You know, some money or some, uh, you have to kill maybe, you know, 50 pigs. Uh, or you, you need to buy a land cruiser, a car, or something like that. You know, some of the ethnic groups, the way they display forgiveness, you know, saying sorry is not enough. You have to, there has to be a price attached to it. But in the church, it's not like this. We don't come like this. We ought to forgive freely as Christ has forgiven us too as well. You know, in some of the, half of the church uh, in Port Mosby, uh, uh, most, most of them are Highlanders, and they, they, they are from these ethnic groups, from these tribal co conflicts. And, and sometimes, you know, we sit down, and you, when we are having discussions or in D groups, and uh, sometimes you can sense the, 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 the culture coming up. Huh? But, uh, but, the, but the Word of God continues to soften people's hearts. And uh, we don't experience that. When we see, when, when in the church, everyone is calm, everyone is patient, there is forgiveness, and that should be the church. We bear with each other all our lives. We stand side by side. We love and forgive and, em and embrace and cherish each other despite of our differences because of what Christ has done for us. My brothers and sisters, I've come to the close of my, of my uh, sharing tonight, and uh, hopefully I have encouraged you to always look above. Amen? Amen. Because that's our hope. And uh, that's our comfort, that's our blessing, that is what we are all looking forward to. I may not see you again, but maybe Sunday I will see you, but you know, that is our hope. We must all, always constantly examine our lives, where we are. Uh, we must look at our lives and what are some of the areas that we need to put to death uh, because of our new identity to Christ. And finally, we need to be, we ought to be different. We ought to be different in our marriages, in our parenting, in our relationships, in our decisions that we are constantly seeking God and constantly living the life that Christ has modeled for us. Amen? Amen. To God be the glory. Amen.